Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining Hosokawa's webinar on part size considerations for dry sorbent injection systems. My name is Bill Brown, and I'm division manager of the Chemicals and Minerals Group here at Hosokawa Micron Powder Systems. Hosokawa Micron Corporation is the global leader in powder processing equipment and systems with headquarters in Osaka, Japan. We employ over 1,500 employees have production facilities in five countries, and technical centers and research facilities. Hosokawa Micron Powder Systems was founded in 1923 under the name of Pulverizing Machinery. We design, manufacture, and build equipment for size reduction, classification, fitting, compression, and analysis in North and South America. Our equipment is designed for chemicals, food, pharmaceutical, minerals, cosmetics, and plastics industries. We have a research facility and testing facility complete with an analytical laboratory here in Summit, New Jersey, where we encourage our customers to participate in equipment trials and system evaluations. At this time, I'd like to introduce our presenter, Mr. Chris Paulsworth, an application engineer for the Chemicals and Minerals Department of Hosokawa Micron Powder Systems. Chris, chemical engineer, with an extensive background in size reduction and mixing applications, one of which includes dry sorbent milling systems. Thanks, Bill, and welcome everyone to today's webinar. Quick review of the table and content as we start. We'll start addressing why flue gas and sulfurization, and from there, go into what is dry sorbent injection. After that, we will compare the sorbents used, sona and, tro sona and sodium bicarbonate, we will then consider the effects of sorbent particle size on sodium dioxide reduction, find an introduction to the size reduction equipment, go over both the mill types used, a comparison of the mill types, and wrap up with a summary and question answer session. Skin, why flu gas desulfurization? Sulfur compounds are present in fossil fuels, and when combusted, sulfur dioxide is generated as a product. The sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere is responsible for the generation of acid rain. The U.S. government regulates this, uh, these emissions. Fluke to sulfurization is a technology used for removing sulfur dioxide from exhaust flue gas in power plants. Flue gas to sulfurization can be done by multiple methods. Dry sorbent injection is one of these methods and will be the topic uh, of today's presentation. Also note, dry sorbent injection can be used for the control of other acid gases. But for today's presentation, we'll just be referring to it as sulfur dioxide. What is dry sorbent injection? Dry sorbent injection is the addition of particles of dry sorbent into the flue gas. SO2 adsorbs, which is similar to adhesion, to the surface of the sorbent. The sorbent with the adhered um, SO2 particles are uh, then collected via fabric filter or electrostatic precipitate, precipitator. And just a quick review of the chemistry, um, very generalized. You have an acidic waste gas and an alkaline sorbent. They act and you end up with a spent sorbent, clean gas, and minor byproducts look at our dry sorbents. Uh, we basically use two dry sorbents, trona and sodium bicarbonate. Trona, which you can see here, this is the chemical, uh, chemical composition and the names, uh, the long chemical name that it goes by. It is a mined mineral. The largest source in the world is near Green River, Wyoming. Uh, there are a couple other sources, but uh, especially in the domestic market, uh, Green River is really the main source. An alternative is sodium bicarbonate, uh, which has this chemical formula here. Sodium bicarbonate is baking soda, same as in your house. It's uh, produced chemically, but there is also, um, there also uh, this is where it is mined. And now to compare the two. two is abundant and easily um, e-sourced in the U.S. It effectively removes 
uh, sodium dioxide from the flue gas stream. Sodium bicarbonate is more effective at removing the sodium dioxide, but it is more expensive than trona in the U.S. because it has to be chemically produced. Because of the general trend that we see is that trona is more prevalent in the U.S. markets, Sodium bicarbonate is more prevalent in European markets. Considering dry sorbent injection systems, the effectiveness is based on a couple variables. These variables are sorbent injection rate, sorbent particle size, flue gas temperature, sorbent residence time in the flue gas stream, sorbent dispersion and mixing within the flue gas and the per particulate control device used, either electrostatic precipitator or fabric filter. So, why reduce the size of your sorbent? Reducing the size of the sorbent increases the surface area for a given mass. By increasing the surface area, you're going to increase the sulfur dioxide removal effectiveness. And kind of at the same time, you're going to reduce your sorbent usage. This chart shown on the on your right hand side shows particle size versus sulfur dioxide removal, um, and you can see how as the particle shrinks, the effective uh, removal increases. So you would need less sorbent. But you are do a more effective job of removing your sorbent. This is important because sorbent will represent a large cost, a, a large portion, excuse me, of the operating cost for these systems. To reduce the size of the sorbent, we use two types of mills: mill and air classifying mill. These mills are generally operated in line, and material is ground on demand. The sorbent is milled and then pneumatically conveyed into the flue gas stream. Start by going over an overview of the pin mill. The material is fed in through the center of the mill here. We have one rotating disc and one stationary disc. The rotating disc will be rotating at a high RPM. The material will come in and is impacted by the rotating disc and stationary disc and is pushed forward with the air flow and by the rotational momentum uh, from the mill. Example of a uh, pin mill configuration. You can see we have the dry sorbent feed silo here and the blood here. Dry sorbent feed silo will dose the material and the blower will push the material into the mill. The material will then be ground and conveyed into the dry sorbent injection system. Now over the air classifying mill. This is slightly more complicated, so try to follow along. We have feed coming in here and it comes in and comes into the path of the hammers, which are these small rectangles here. The hammers are located on a disc that's spinning at a high rotational speed. Air is fed in through the bottom section and comes up around the disc. After impact with the hammers, the feed is, is picked up the air and carried up to the dynamic air classifier. The classifier will let particles that are sufficiently small through and reject particles that are not yet ground finely and send them back into the path of the hammers. You can see a sample air classifying mill configuration. The feed side is here and the mill is dosed into the classifying mill. You can see in this configuration that the lower is downstream from the mill. The mill pulls the material through the air classifying mill mill and then pushes it into the dry sorbent injection system. This blower has to be able to handle material passing through it as it pulls the material and then pushes it. So a special blower can be used for these applications. Here you can see a comparison of particle size that comes out of these two different types of mills. 
mill data is the black particle size distribution, and air classifying mill is the blue. You see that the D50 for both products is similar, but the curves are sl shaped slightly different. The pin mill has a narrow peak, but has tails on both ends. And you can especially see this when considering the D97, D99, and D100. The air classifying mill has a steep curve on this side, with less grit seen here. Now, you can see what happens. That comparison was to get the D50 equivalent to what you would get with a pin mill. This comparison is showing the air classifying mill grinding finer than the pin mill. These are two curves from air classifying mill. The same curve that was displayed on the previous slide, plus one grinding finer to a D50 of 5.455 microns. You see how the size distribution narrows. You still do not have the grit and the fine tail is almost identical. Compare the two types of mills. The pill can be operated in a positive pressure mode, pushing material through. It gives a narrow peak, but a wide particle distribution with tails on both the coarse and fines. The air classifying mill is operated at a slight negative pressure require a material handling fan, or as an alternative, but was not mentioned, you can collect the product with a um, back house and then push it into the system afterwards. The air classifying mill has less grit than the pin mill and can grind finer than the pin mill. This slide shows how capacity of mill of the mills changes as you Change the particle size of the product. Shows the D50 of the of the product. And see how as you go finer, your capacity greatly drops off, even from a capacity of you know 10 or 12 and a half microns down to seven and a half or five microns. You're seeing a, a great reduction in the particle size. This is important when considering the size of your sorbent and the capacity of the mills to be used in the systems. Summarize, the is regulating sulfur dioxide emissions. Trisorbent injection is an effective and proven method for the removal of sulfur dioxide from the flue gas stream. The size of the dry sorbent used will, along with other variables, affect the efficiency of the system. Reducing the size of the sorbent reduces the operating cost for the dry sorbent injection systems by increasing your efficiency. The pin mill and the air classifying mill will both effectively reduce the size of the dry sorbent. Thank you for your time. Thank you. At this time, we begin our question and answer session. We've received quite a number of questions throughout the program, and we'll try to answer these questions as many, at least answer as many questions as possible. If we are unable to answer your question at this time, so we'll provide you with a response offline. Chris, question. <clears throat> Classifying mill will be switched from grinding sodium bicarbonate to no, or vice versa. That's a good question. The classifying mill can grind both sodium bicarbonate or trona. With bicarbonate, sometimes we can see a up with the, with the mill, so this has to be accounted for. And also, the layout is different. Um, well, sorry. That is addressing another issue. When uh, changing from one dry sorbent to another, uh, it's not a problem with the uh, air classifying mill. Next. My company's been using pin mills for the decade or so, milling Trona. Can you comment on how the pins compare, or pin mills compare to an air classifying mill? They both effectively will reduce the size. The classifying mill can grind finer than the pin mill um, would increase your efficiency of your system. Um, but if you wanted to switch from one to another, you would also need to consider the layout changes from one system to another um, and the different types of uh, configurations required. Okay. 
What type of Weberton options are available for the pen on the air classifying mill? The types of mills, um, they're wear protected in different ways. So the pin mill, we could harden the pins and then wear as they're impacted. For the classifying mill, we harden the hammers. We can put a hardened plate on top of it. We can do hardened liners, or we can do a coated classifier um, to prevent wear on that portion as well. What is the typical temperature rise across an air classifying mill for this application? For applications, we tend to see a temperature rise of about 40 to 50 degrees for an air classifying mill, and that's Fahrenheit. And we would probably see a similar temperature rise for a pin mill. What is involved with respect to cleaning and maintenance for a classifying mill? For cleaning and maintenance um, on the mills, both mills are pretty easily accessible. For the air classifying mill, um, you would disconnect the, the discharge duct, and then you can open the mill and inspect the internals. Um, you could replace hammers. Uh, most common wear is going to be on the impact parts, so the hammers would be uh, what you would really want to consider. Another option. Um, that comes up is um, you can use limestone um, to scour the internals of the mill um, to clean it of any buildup residue. Question, Chris. Exploring the possibility of purging a raw material already to finer particle size, what is the difference between maybe purging finer grade feedstock versus milling it on site? The question of uh, economics, and most of, the, most of these questions would have to be answered by the you know, at each individual site. Um, you would have to consider the cost of the system and the cost of operating sy the system versus the cost of purchasing a finer grade of feed. Um, it, it would be a question that would have to be answered on a case by case basis. Next question. Different. A different effectiveness between the pin mill or the acidifying mill when compared to chona versus sodium bicarbonate. For example, is one uh, better chona and, and uh, is sodium carbonate better for another? Both mills work effectively with both types, so there's not really that big of a difference. Mostly, the chona, uh, excuse me, the trona versus the sodium bicarbonate question comes into which feedstock is more readily accessible and the cost of the different feedstocks. Order of magnitude cost differential between the two mills for a similar throughput. Considering an ACE, uh, air classifying mill, pin mill, the CM can be up to almost twice the cost of a pin mill for a similar throughput. Just one second. We're we're processing your questions. Is there a recommendation for the final disposal of chona or sodium bicarbonate? For the final disposal of the product, that's something that is not really our specialty. Normally, it's landfilled along with other waste. Uh, and you would need to check with, uh, you know, local authorities or um, other people who uh, would have um, more experience with the disposal of these products. Horsepower differences between the mills for, say, 100 pounds per hour. Horsepower differences, you'd maybe have a three-horsepower mill for the air classifying mill and a four- to five-horsepower for the, uh, for the pin mill, uh, this is really only a guess, and it can vary uh, based on your inlet size um, and the discharge size that you're shooting for. Thank you once again for the presentation. We're out of time, unfortunately, and thank you for joining our program today.
I hope you enjoyed this presentation. This program has been recorded and will be posted to the host Apple website within the next 48 hours. Please feel free to review the recording again and share the presentation with friends and colleagues. If you have any questions about the presentation or this technology, please contact Chris Paulsworth directly. His information is posted here on the screen. Thank you and have a great day.